the the video um, to our uh, page, uh, Trilla webpage. And so now everybody, we are live. Um, so just, you know, FYI for everybody. Um, so we're gonna officially start our webinar. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the people that are joining us through the webinar and also through Facebook Live. Um, we're really happy to be here. We're going to have a lot of important information on the California Dream Act, which is financial aid for undocumented students. Um, and we're going to get started with just brief introductions. Um, and then I'm going to pass it to Lupita as well. So you can introduce yourself, Lupita. Um, my name is Katia Garcia. I'm the Youth Programs Manager with Chirla. Um, and so I'm excited to be here to, with you all to give you information. And I'll pass it over to Lupita. Hi everyone, my name is Lupita Martinez. I am the California Dream Network statewide organizer. So if you're in the LA region, coastal region, and you are currently a youth in college, I am your go-to person to get you plugged in and also share all the resources we have as, um, as a CDN. So very excited to share all of our knowledge that we have today. And please, please make sure you're asking all the questions so we can go ahead and help you with that. Thank you, Lupita. Um, and I am being told to share my full screen and disclaimer, I do not know how to do that. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you can all chat me in so that I can know how to do that, that would be wonderful. But I think we can get started. Um, I think uh, the presentation is still visible. Um, but just in case, um, I will do that once we figure it out. It's 2022 and we're still dealing with, you know, how to work the computer and Zoom. Um, so just um, uh, for everybody, we are having this workshop um, through our organization, Chirla, which is a coalition for humane immigrant rights. Um, and we work with immigrant families throughout the whole state of California um, and immigrant youth as well. And, and so we're here today to talk about financial aid for undocumented students. Um, and I think um, it's really important for us to really dive into what is financial aid. Um, so that we actually understand what we're talking about when we use the term financial aid. And the way I like to think about it is that financial aid is basically money that students may receive to be able to pay for college. Um, the, the key word here is may, right? Because like a lot of things, we have to make sure that we meet for certain requirements um, so that we're actually able to apply um, and uh, have the opportunity to receive this help. Um, what can we use this money for? We can use it to pay tuition and fees, room and boarding, books and supplies, and sometimes even transportation. So again, financial aid is financial assistance or money uh, so that you can go to college. Um, Important to know, there's two types of financial aid. We have FAFSA and the California Dream Act. Today, we will be diving into what the California Dream Act is. So this is financial aid for undocumented students or money for undocumented students. Um, one thing that I do want to mention from this is that the California Dream Act is state financial aid. So meaning that this help, it's only available in California. Um, it might not be available in other states. Um, but thanks to the hard work that, you know, immigrant organizations, immigrant youth have put um, around organizing to push for resources and just laws that benefit immigrant youth, California has been able to actually pass um, this law that gives financial aid for undocumented students. So don't get confused. We're here to learn about the California Dream Act. Um, and FAFSA is, is another type of financial aid, um, but that can be covered in a different webinar. Or if you have questions, we're going to give you a number to call in case you want to learn more about that uh, assistance. And okay, let's go over now who actually can, uh, the type of, you know, students or groups that can apply for the California Dream Act. And here we just give you also the compare and contrast between FAFSA and the California Dream Act so that you get an idea that these two are very different. 
they're different and that means that different uh, students according you know to their um, legal status um, might be able to qualify for for different ones right meaning that you can apply for one but not the other um, so for the california dream act who can apply undocumented students or you know sometimes you might hear the term ab 540 students um, and lupita and i will be diving into a little bit more what it means to be an ab 540 student some students that have the u visa can also might also apply for the California Dream Act. And some TPS holders might also apply for the California Dream Act. Um, FAFSA, again, it's different because FAFSA is financial aid for US citizens or permanent residents that, have, that are green card holders. So again, you see the difference. Uh, if you're undocumented, if you, if, if you have DACA as well, right? Because remember, DACA is not a, a legal status. You simply have a, a, a work permit to work, um, a social security number to work, right? You should also apply for the California Dream Act because even if you have DACA, you are still undocumented. Perfect. And so I think one common misconception in this, um, Lupita and I hear a lot, right? We hear um, that students get confused because they think that if their parents are undocumented, they cannot qualify or they cannot apply for any type of financial aid. Well, that's, that's a myth. Uh, that is not how it works. Um, when you're applying for the California Dream Act, we look or the, you know, the state looks at the status of the student, not the status of the parent. So in this case, it doesn't matter if your parent is undocumented, it doesn't matter if your parent, you know, is a citizen or whatnot, or if they have visa, um, it, it doesn't really matter. What matters is your legal status, right? Um, so again, if you're undocumented, if you have the U visa or your uh, TPS holder, um, you might apply um, qualified to apply for the California Dream Act. Um, so super important so that you don't get confused uh, and you don't hear um, people telling you, oh, well, uh, we don't think that, you know, you can go to college um, since your parents are undocumented and, and whatnot. And another common misconception is that um, people think and students think that financial aid uh, is based on a first come first serve basis kind of like if I you know stand on the line first I'm gonna get like I'm like for sure I'm gonna be given the money right uh, so I'm gonna apply the very first day that the application opens up which is October 1st well that's a misconception um, so it's not based on a first come first serve basis you are given time, right, between October 1st and March 2nd. That's the time that you have to be able to submit your California Dream Act application. So it doesn't matter really when in this gap you or time span you complete it. Um, it what matters is that, is that you complete it before the deadline. The deadline is March 2nd. So you have to complete it by March 2nd. Now, this is not uh, recommendation from us to be like submit it on the last day on March 2nd right like at 11 p.m no do not wait until that time to submit your application because hey everything that can go wrong will probably go wrong that day what if you know your computer crashes your internet crashes so you have to really make sure that you do give yourself the time to complete it and to submit it um, with enough time so that um, you make sure that that application is correct and you submit it on time. So um, you might be getting questions uh, and we promise that we're gonna dive deeper into the application um, to actually review some of the questions found on the California Dream Act. Um, but for now, please write your questions on a piece of paper because at the end we'll, we will have some time to go over them. So what is the California Dream Act? Um, and so the California Dream Act, um, you know, we have a very simple definition here. It allows undocumented students who are actually categorized as AV 540 to receive certain types of financial aid. 
um, in the state of California. So it, what I wanna highlight from here is that um, California Dream Act financial aid, again, we have covered this before, but in order to actually uh, even be able to apply for the California Dream Act, you have to have the um, AB 540 uh, status or you have to meet the requirements of AB 540. So super important. Again, I'm gonna repeat this for the third time. Who can apply to the California Dream Act? If, you know, if I had you all here in front of me, I will probably be picking on you and asking you uh, to quiz you uh, and see if you're getting it right. But again, undocumented students, some students that have the U visa and some TPS holders can apply for the California Dream Act. Um, so don't forget that um, and please share the information. So what is the most important eligible requirement to apply for the California Dream Act? And I mentioned this already, so pop quiz, put it on the chat if you know the answer. But again, you do have to have the requirements for AB 540. So now, this is where I don't want you all you know, to get confused, but you might ask yourselves, what is AB 540? And this, this is uh, different from the California Dream Act. What I want you to understand that uh, AB 540 was actually a law that passed way before the California Dream Act. Um, and AB 540 actually allows undocumented students to pay in-state tuition instead of out-of-state tuition. Um, for example, uh, years ago, if you were undocumented, you had to pay two times or three times more money just because you were undocumented. Um, so that's obviously not fair and it, would, it made it harder for undocumented students to be able to actually even uh, afford college, right? Um, it was like a like a punishment, right? Like if you're undocumented, you have to pay like three, time, three times more money um, for college. Um, so what AB 540 did is that it actually simply uh, allow undocumented students to pay the same as US citizen students. Uh, so now we don't have to pay extra for being undocumented, right? We can just, you know, if we meet the requirements, we're able to pay the same amount for our college tuition as any as any other student that was born here. So what are the requirements? Um, and this is where you should probably be taking a picture of these requirements or you should be writing them down on your notebook. Um, but the first requirement is that you have to um, attend a full three years in a California high school or California adult school, or you can do a combination of the two. You know, maybe um, you did two years of high school here in California, uh, and then, um, you know, for some reason, you ended up, you know, going to adult school the last year. That's a combination of the of the two, right? But it's a total of three years. Another thing is that maybe you don't have this first uh, requirement, right? Like, what if like you don't fall into this category? Does that mean that you don't fall? You don't get to qualify to be considered an AB five forty student? Well, there's other option. Um, and if you didn't qualify for this first one, maybe you can fall on this next one, which is um, you having three years of high school credits and three years uh, of total attendance at any of these schools in California, either an elementary, a middle school, or a high school. Um, so again, maybe you didn't do all the four years, um, you know, three, four years of um, high school here in California, but you did credits, the equivalent of three years, but in credits, right? So you were like a super smart, smart kid and you, like you went to after school classes and like summer school and you caught up and you got those three years of credit really fast, right? Um, but you also have, you also maybe went to a, an elementary school here in California for, for one year, right? Um, that can also help you uh, meet these requirements. So it, it can be a little bit like um, confusing, yo, but again, uh, if you have questions, please write them down and we can dive a little bit more deeper into this. The requirement B, 
So you have to graduate from a California high school or you have to have the equivalent of a, a high school diploma, which is a GED, right? You can go to adult school to get your GED, or you can even take a, a test that if you pass it, it will give you the equivalent of actually um, getting a, a high school diploma or your GED. Um, so you have options, right? If you don't have your high school diploma, there are options for you um, in case um, you really do wanna go to college, right? All right, so types of financial aid. Um, one thing that, that we wanna highlight from this, from this slide, right? Because we don't want you to get confused. Within the California Dream Act, once you fill out the application, you're actually applying for various different types of money. You are applying for state aid, institutional aid, and even loans. Um, so uh, if you're asking yourself, well, you know, how can I apply for state aid or institutional aid, which is, you know, help given by the schools that you're actually going to, um, the question is by you filling out your application, you are already actually applying for this thing. So you don't have to do or take any more steps. You're already done. That's how important it is. Um, so that's really what we want to highlight from this. Uh, do not get confused, right? It, it's not different applications. Um, the California Dream Act allows you to apply for this different type of aids um, that fall under the California uh, financial aid. And again, here, uh, unfortunately, California Dream Act applicants do not qualify for federal aid. Um, and one thing that I want you to understand from here is um, the reason why is because uh, students that usually uh, apply and that apply for the California Dream Act um, are undocumented, right? And unfortunately, uh, we cannot get federal aid. That will be FAFSA, right? Um, and that's because of our legal status. And this is why we're continuously fighting to make sure that eventually, right, our goal is to be able to make sure that, hey, we are, we also as undocumented students be able to apply for federal aid uh, of some sort. Um, right now, we only have the state help through the California Dream Act, but this is why we're, we continue to fight and advocate for our immigrant youth. Pop quiz. When is the deadline for the California Dream Act? You should all know it by now. It's due March 2nd. And this is literally the reason why we're doing this webinar today, because we want to make sure that you understand and have everything you need to submit your application on time. Just to give you some, um, I guess, reality reality, you know, check of what has been happening. We did receive numbers that the California Dream Act um, application, uh, the number of the California Dream Act application submitted last year decreased tremendously. And, you know, this is something that we, that it's really concerning to us because we want to make sure that if you're on the, on, undocumented, you understand that there are resources, uh, more resources now for you to go to college. And we want to make sure that our undocumented immigrant students go to college if they want to. Um, so again, please uh, help us spread the word. Uh, please complete your application on time. Super important. And now I'm going to pass it over to Lupita, who will be diving a little bit more into the application. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Katia. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and be diving into the application itself. And the points I'm going to be covering, they're the most questions asked um, through financial aid. If there are additional questions regarding your application, if you haven't started it or you're in the process, please, please, I encourage you, if you get stuck on a question that we don't cover here throughout the application, if you reach out to Katia and I, we're going to go ahead and share our information at the end end of the presentation and also a hotline that you can call to reach us at. So let's go ahead and get started. 
All right, to get to the application, it's super easy. Sometimes if I like save links, I'll like forget where I save them. So this is the easy way to always um, go into your California Dream Act. Simply go to Google and type in California Dream Act application. And it's normally the first link that pops up. that's gonna go ahead and direct you to this page. So every time you see this young lady, that means you are in the correct page. Now, if you are a high school student that is applying uh, to the California Dream Act to go to college, then you'll go ahead and select that first start, which is circled. Um, if you are a college student that's reapplying to the California Dream Act, you're going to go ahead and select login, which is the second option right next to the star. And I do want to remind you all that this is an application that you have to fill out every single year to get your financial aid money. So yes, um, I had to fill out this application every single year and the dead and turn it submitted before March 2nd. Now, um, beef, so this is what the application is going to look like when you log in. However, before getting to this um, inside the application, it is going to ask you a series of questions just to verify that you do qualify for the California Dream Act. Um, very simple questions. It's just two. So just be aware of that before it takes you to the home page. I also want to give the disclaimer that recently with the students that I've been helping create this application, the system after uh, creating their password or their username, it does say error or it does shut down. If you do encounter that, just make sure you refresh the page and try to log in again or try to recreate your um, password. But again, it's been happening really often, so it's totally normal. It's nothing wrong on your end. I think it's just the computer uh, database that that's where it happens. But going back to this slide, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be divided into different sections. And I know it may seem like a lot, but I always tell students it's super, super easy um, to fill out each portion. So starting off, I do want to um, really point out that it's so important that you put your correct name, last name, and date of birth. This is so important because once you submit those college applications and you also submit your California Dream Act, what happens is both of these systems like connect, right? So if you misspell your name, um, then the college application and your financial aid, it's not going to match. So you're going to find trouble in that. So please, please double check your name, uh, first name, last name, your date of birth. And we can go ahead and go on to the next slide. All right, and now it is gonna ask for an email. You wanna make sure that for the email section, for our high school students, you do not use your district email at all because your district email at one point, that will be um, pretty much shut down and you won't have access to it, right? So you wanna make sure you're using a personal email. Now, I also want to encourage you to not put down an email where you're subscribed to like a whole bunch of different things. I know I'm subscribed to like Vans and like Bath and Body Works. Um, so I know that I get a lot of junk mail so because it's always important to stay on top of your emails that your colleges and your financial aid application is sending you, um, you want to make sure you have you either create a new email or um, you double check that you don't get a lot of junk mail. All right, so this is one of the common um, questions that we receive from students. Um, so you want to make sure that when it asks uh, the question, your citizenship status, you want to go ahead and select I am a I am not a citizen or an eligible non citizen, excuse me, non L or an eligible citizen, non-citizen. And the reason for this is that if you select the other two options, what would happen is it will stop your application there and it will tell you that you are not eligible for the application. And it's going to potentially redirect you to the FAFSA. But as y'all remember, the FAFSA is for U.S. citizens or green card holders. So you want to make sure you select I am not a citizen or an eligible non-citizen to continue on with your application. 
All righty. So this is a common question I get from my high school students. Um, they're like, hey, Ms., um, what, will, what will your high school completion status be when you begin college? You want to make sure that you would have a high school diploma. A lot of our students are like, but wait, I, I don't have my diploma yet. And I'm like, yeah, but reread the question. It's um, once you begin your college. And I know this date is wrong for all of you. It'll be uh, 2022 to 2023. Um, so you would go ahead and put a high school diploma for our high school students. Now for this next section, um, for uh, 29, um, when it asks you what will your grade level be when you begin the school year? Again, for 2022, 2023, for our high school students, it would be never attended college. It's going to be your first year. And then 30, you want to go ahead and put down that you're working toward your first bachelor degree. There is also um, other options, but normally the most common one is that you are working toward your first uh, bachelor degree for our students that are going to a community college or are currently in community college, because our hope is for you to transfer and go to a UC, a Cal State, or a private university. Your ultimate goal long term would still be to uh, receive a first bachelor's degree. Now, there is going to be a section where you're going to be, for our high school students, you're going to have to put down all the schools that you are applying to. So um, this is where you're going to be able to search up the, the college. Um, I know that on there you can see that there's a code. Um, this particular code just means that every school has a code um, and it's easy search. But I normally don't like to use a code. I just search it up by the college's name. And normally it pops up. I have like no issue finding the school. So you want to make sure you add all the schools that you apply to your senior year um, because you don't know which college you're going to be attending. So you want to make sure that all these colleges receive your California Dream Act application. And in addition to that, you want to make sure you want you send it to all these colleges and universities that you apply to because later on around April around uh, April or maybe a little bit sooner, depending on the school, you will get your financial aid packet. And what your financial aid packet is, how much the state of California is gonna give you and how much the school is, how much money the school is gonna give you. So that is why it's so important to put down all the colleges you're attending to, or sorry, you apply to. And in addition to that, there uh, is gonna be a section that's gonna, ask you like what is going to be your housing situation if you're not sure what your housing situation is going to be I just encourage to for students to put off campus um, for the meantime just as they figure out their situation another reminder is that you can only add up to 10 schools there are times where some of our high school students they apply to more than 10 schools however what will happen is you select 10 schools that you apply to, you're going to submit your application and then you're going to go back to it and edit, edit it. So then you're going to take away some colleges and add the new ones that also need to be added. So you're going to submit your application twice to ensure all those colleges get your uh, California Dream Act. But again, if you apply to less than 10 colleges, then what I just said does not apply to you. If you are a current college student, then you already know which college you're attending to. So then you'll just go ahead and provide that one college you're attending to. Now we're going to dive into the fun stuff. So this is actually the part that some of our students and parents get intimidated with the most, but it's not too bad. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into student taxes. So if you are a current student and you are not earning more than, I believe the bracket is um, over 9,000 or 12,000, which I will have a bracket that provides it here, you don't have to file taxes. So if we go to the next slide, so most of the students we work uh, with, um, they don't file taxes because they don't make enough to have to file taxes. So you're just gonna go ahead and select not going to file taxes. There are additional questions that you will have to go through. And most students freak out because they're like, 
why are these all zeros? It's totally okay as long as you're reading the questions word by word. And most of these questions have like a little, a, I, I believe it's like a little exclamation point where you can click on and it breaks down the question for you. So if you are completely sure it doesn't apply to you, then your answers will be zero. Now, for parent taxes, um, and this is where it can potentially get a little bit tricky. For parents who file taxes, um, all that's going to happen is you want to make sure you have your 1040 forms or whatever way that your parents file taxes, um, and you're going to be uh, going step by step, it's going to tell you like, what do your parents tax forms say in line one or line two? And that's just an example, but that's how you're going to be able to put down the information that the California Dream Act is asking you for. Um, there are very particular situations where we're going to go ahead and go to next. So let's just say, what if my parents do not file taxes? So that is a very common question. And again, you want to ensure you're using the IRS bracket, which I will include an example of it, but it's an easy Google search. Um, and it'll show you how much money your uh, the annual income has to be in order to file taxes. I know it's super, super common for some of our parents to either get paid in cash. Um, so if you do find yourself in that situation, I encourage you to please, please send an email to Katia or myself so we can go ahead and help you directly of how your application will be filled out. So if your parents don't file taxes, please don't uh, freak out. Just please, please uh, contact myself or Katia so we can go ahead and guide you through that process. And this is the bracket that I got off. This is a source from the IRS. This is just an example, and I know it can be a little hard to read, but um, it tells you the cutoffs of how much you will be making if you were single. Uh, so I know we have some parents that are single, and sometimes they don't have to file taxes because they're not making enough. And they also break it down by different situations. So if you're married and filed separately or if you're married and filed jointly, this can get a little confusing. So I just wanted to put this out there to give you all a visual that there's a bracket. For further um, breakdown, please contact us and we can break this down for you. But again, if your parents filed taxes, then this technically doesn't um, apply to you. All right. And right here for this question, it's when it's going to ask you if your parents file taxes, already file taxes, or not going to file. Um, so those are different selections where parents um, can select that, that answer. Now, we do have situations where students are here in the state of California um, and their parents are not here, they're in a different country. So the easy way to do is we would still need to provide how much money your parent or guardian is making from that different country. All we have to do is convert how much they're making, how much they're making, and then change it into U.S. dollars. And that would literally be it. I know there's other very particular situations. Um, with those situations, we encourage you again to contact us and we can direct you and also link up with the financial aid hotline to see what would be your route in order to submit that information. But again, you can still fill out the California Dream Act if you find yourself in very particular situations. As long as you meet the AB 540 requirement, then you are eligible for all of this uh, money that the state of California um, can potentially offer you. All right, so after that, after you complete everything, you wanna make sure the student signs this application. It's an easy e-sign and you wanna make sure that your parent also signs this application. Um, at the end of the application, once both of you sign it, 
it is very important that you check the email that you put down here um, on your California Dream Act application and you get that email confirmation that you have submitted your California Dream Act. And I always like to play it safe. I always like to be safe than sorry. So I tell my students, hey, screenshot everything. Like if you get that confirmation email that it's in, take a screenshot that you got it because um, let's just say something happens, which rarely does. But again, you have that proof um, that you did your application and you submitted it before March 2nd. So this is just a reminder, if you do have questions and you're here on the webinar, you can go ahead and provide it in the Q&A. If you are on Facebook Live and have questions, um, we're going to take a moment to look at those and hopefully answer those as well. So now I'm going to jump into the AB 540. So as Katia explained earlier, she went over the requirements. However, this is actually a form as well that all students have to submit. So let's dive into how the AB 540 form looks or actually how to search it. Very easy search, Google, and you can search up for Formulario in Spanish, AB 540, or Form AB 540. And it's normally the first link that comes out. It is provided by the csac.cda.gov. And this is what it looks like. And it's literally the requirements that Katia went over. This application, or sorry, this form takes about two minutes to fill out. You're just gonna go ahead and provide your name and, uh, and check off everything that applies to you. So the intention behind this is just to verify that the student does qualify for AB 540. It's just an additional step behind that it's a two minute application uh, form. If you need help filling that out, we can go ahead and help you with that too. And this is the back of the form where you just provide, you know, what schools you attended to and then your signature. And that is it. So with this particular tip as a reminder is that some schools will ask you to mail it in, but other schools will ask you either to email it in or to, um, for our high school students to submit it through their uh, portals. Now, if you haven't heard of the word per portal before is um, after you submitted all of your college applications, you, sh you should have uh, gotten an email from the all the colleges that you apply to, to create a portal. And this is how sometimes they stay close in communication with you, um, or that's where they ask for you to submit additional requirements. So which is what which is why it's so important for all of our students to consistently be checking their emails and those college portals, especially our seniors that are tuning in with us right now. Please double check it. Um, so I said, I know Cal State LA particularly asked students to submit this particular form, or at least from last year through, the, through their portal. So you want to make sure you're submitting that. However, if they're requiring you to submit this AB 540 form through mail, so important to send it in through certified mail. Now, what does that mean? That means you have to go inside the post office and you have to be like, hey, I want to send this uh, form through certified mail. That just means they're tracking it. And why do you want to track it? It's because let's just say it gets lost, right? Now, there's no way to prove that you sent this form in and the college can be like, well, there goes your financial aid. You can't prove that you filled it out. That it was actually a case that happened to me with one particular student who um, actually um, it, it didn't get their through mail. So with this, if they would have had the certified mail, they could have been like, hey, like right here, I, I have that it received that your school received it on this and this date. And in addition to that, just a life tip, any like legal documents, anything regarding to college that um, you need to send, you always want to make sure you send those documents through certified mail so you can track it and ensure you hold the other party accountable that whatever it is you're sending did get to the correct location. All right, we can go to the next slide. 
All right. So that is all we have in regards to the application itself. We will be diving into questions soon, but I also wanted to share with you some scholarship opportunities. Um, there are a lot of um, organizations that provide scholarship for our students, so, such as the Hispanic Scholarship Fund, MELDEV, Hispanic Scholarship Fun, which I just talked about, but that's a different one. Um, Hispanic Heritage Foundation, the Dream US. And if we go to the next slide, these are actually particular um, filters that you created application, and it'll it'll go ahead and help you find scholarships that directly apply to you. Um, so I know when I was in high school and I was like looking for scholarships, um, your profile, like they asked some questions, like, are you in a sport? Um, I know I was, I danced at the time. So I was able to submit some applications that, um, that were like for dancers. So there's a lot of money out there. It does take time, but I definitely encourage you all to, you know, find some time to apply to these scholarships. Just a couple of tips. If a scholarship ever asks for a credit card, for a debit card information, that those are red flags that it is not a legit scholarship. So please, please look out for that. For our student, for our undocumented students who have a working social security number, if it's asking for a social security number, do not provide it at all. That means it is a scam as well. So you want to be make sure that the scholarships you are applying to are legit. And let's go ahead and go to the next slide. All right. Okay, so actually, um, let's go ahead and start answering questions so we can unshare the presentation to answer some questions before we share contact information because we all want you to hopefully get some extra knowledge to the questions that our students ask. All right. Let's see if we have any questions. Okay, we do for our viewers, viewers on Facebook Live, we did get a question on the chat that said, do you need to be to be coming out of high school to apply? Um, and the question is, um, one, in order to apply to the California Dream Act, you need to be a senior. Um, who's going to be attending a college or a university. And then in addition to that, for our current college students, um, you should have applied for the uh, California Dream Act when you were transitioning from high school to college. And then our reoccurring, our, our, yeah, reoccurring college students that are their sophomore, junior, um, and senior year should be applying for the California Dream Act. Yes, you have to renew this application every single year. And then let's see if there's other questions. We have a, a question, Lupita. Uh, Israel from Facebook Live is asking if all those scholarships you have there on the list are completely for undocumented folks. Yeah, that is a great question. So for these particular ones, um, yes and no, they're, they are a mixture. Um, so I definitely encourage you to look at some of the criteria. I know we have some viewers that are filling out the FAFSA application. So we go ahead and include these as well. But some of these applications are also for both for both uh, groups of students, right? For both students who are applying to FAFSA and the California Dream Act. And if we go to the next slide, since those you are creating like your profile for uh, for you to have specific um, scholarships be sent to you, you can go ahead. Sometimes they do have if you're um, undocumented and those can be filtered out as well. But I was I want to also encourage y'all to um, visit. Uh, ooh, I'll remember the name of that organization and all those um, scholarships are particularly for undocumented students. We have one more question, Lupita. Uh, Saul is asking, if I have already received acceptance letters from universities, when will I know how much money I will receive to go to each university? I have already filled out the California Dream Act. 
This is a great question. And actually, first off, congratulations, Saul, for some of your acceptances already. Woo -woo. Um, but in regards of when you're going to get your financial aid packet, it definitely will vary by school. Um, normally, I've seen those financial aid packets come out either at the end of March or um, in April. And remember, each school is going to potentially send it at a different time. However, I can assure you that those financial aid packets will be sent out to you before May 1st, because that is when you SIR. So May 1st, um, when you SIR is when all of our students who uh, got acceptance letters get to go ahead and commit to which school they're going to be attending to. So for sure before May 1st. Thank you, Lupita. And um, just a reminder, everybody, um, maybe you don't have a question right now, but tomorrow you wake up and you're like, oh man, I should have asked this question. We are going to provide on the last slide a phone number that you can call um, with questions about the California Dream Act. Somebody will actually send us your information to contact you. Um, if you if you need help, we can set up a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but yes, um, we can provide you with that number at the end. So just keep an eye out for it. Um, and yeah, Lupita, let me know if you need me to move on to the next uh, slides. Yes. Um, so um, I also wanted to invite you all. So as I shared before, I am the LA region and coastal uh, region youth organizer. And on March 10th, we're going to go ahead and start our leadership uh, meetings. They are going to be monthly. So if you're interested in joining uh, my team, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to go ahead and be sharing my contact information at the end. But just just to provide you a quick snippet of what the California Dreamers Network is, it provides um, not only a network of undocumented students who are in different universities across um, California, um, you have resources, you can build community, but most importantly, what in the LA region, what I will be providing is leadership trainings. I will be inviting you to marches, rallies, civil disobediences. My personal favorite is um, some of our students have the potential opportunity to travel all the way to DC and march and meet with um, some of our leaders and, you know, make sure and sharing their stories and holding them accountable to all the promises um, that they say they're going to do. Um, so that's always a great opportunity. Um, we also do local, state, national advocacy. We do community organizing, and we are um, in midterm elections. So if you are also interested in phone banking or canvassing, these are potentially paid um, paid well paid if you decide to uh, commit some time for that particular um, opportunity. And I will also be providing professional development workshops. So if you are interested, um, please, please make sure you connect with me so I can go ahead and get you plugged in. Um, I will be sh sharing out a flyer um, soon. So keep an eye out. Please follow Chirla's Instagram, Chirla's Facebook. Um, so we you can go ahead and stay informed and up to date. Thank you, Lupita. And as promised, um, Lu we have our contact information here. Um, Lupita's uh, email address, my email address. Uh, and over here at the bottom, you're going to see the phone number or immigrant assistance line that you can actually call with any questions about the California Dream Act. Um, the person answering your call will uh, decide to transfer you to us, uh, whether, you know, according if you're a, a high school student or a college student, as Lupita mentioned, um, she works with college students, but we do have a high school component at Chirla. It's called Wise Up. Um, and so if you're a high school student and you really want to meet other high school students who are, you know, struggling as well, um, 
you want to find a sense of community and just support uh, from folks that have resources and knowledge about, you know, undocumented immigrant rights and just, you know, helping um, that they have um, a, a way of helping, you know, immigrant youth, uh, please uh, con contact me. Uh, we would love to have you um, uh, join uh, our awesome fight uh, to advance immigrant rights issues um, across uh, California and everywhere uh, in the country. Um, so those are our contact information. Please feel free to contact us. Um, other than that, I think uh, we are ready to, um, we're gonna say bye to the people seeing us on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining us. Please make sure that you're sharing this, um, this webinar, uh, send it to your students, send it to your teacher um, so that they can share with as many students as possible because we wanna make sure that this year is the year when many, many students apply for the California Dream Act. And that money actually goes towards undocumented students that need it. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us um, on Facebook Live. Uh, we're gonna stop um, going live right now, but it was a pleasure to be here with you. And we're gonna stay, uh, for those of you that are here on the webinar with us, we can stay a few more minutes to answer any other questions. So thank you everybody. Bye to the Facebook Live people. Okay, everybody, so we are not live anymore, so we are free. Um, we have five more minutes to answer any other questions that you have, even if you have questions about the California Dream Network, Lupita's here, she can tell you 